From a crashed airplane to a bullet through the brain, there are some things you just wouldn't expect someone to live through to tell the tale. But sometimes, the unbelievable happens. So today, we will be counting down six amazing stories of survival. Number six. On February 19, 1979, 11-year-old Norman Alstead Jr. was on a plane with his father when they were hit by a blizzard causing the pilot to crash into the San Gabriel Mountains, killing Norman Sr. Shortly after the crash, the pilot also died, leaving Norman and his father's girlfriend Sandra at over 8,000 feet and caught in the blizzard. While making their way down the mountain, Sandra died after falling down a chute, leaving 11-year-old Norman alone. Norman continued down the mountain for another nine hours, finally reaching the bottom where he was rescued. Years later, Norman revisited the crash site, where he found parts of the wreckage and reconnected with the family that had given him shelter when he reached safety. In 2009, he released his memoir titled Crazy for the Storm, which was later optioned to be made into a motion picture. Number 5. In December of 2007, seven-year-old Alexis Goggins and her mother, Salethia Parker, were leaving their Detroit home with a family friend when Salethia's former boyfriend, Calvin, ambushed them and at gunpoint forced his way into the car. After driving for a short time, Parker's friend convinced Calvin that she needed to stop for fuel. Parker and Goggins were left in the car while the friend went inside. As she entered, she called 911, but was told that there were no police units available. Growing nervous, Calvin began firing at Parker, hitting her once in the side of the head and once in her arm. Before Calvin could fire a third shot, Alexis jumped from the back seat into the front to shield Salethia while screaming not to hurt her mother. Without hesitation, Calvin fired six shots into Alexis, hitting her in the right eye, left temple, cheek, chin, left arm, and chest. As Calvin tried to escape, Salethia, thinking her daughter had just been killed, grabbed him, knocking the gun from his hand and holding him down until a suddenly available police unit arrived shortly after. Doctors told Salethia, who made a full recovery, that her daughter would never walk or talk again. However, after multiple surgeries, aside from losing her right eye, Alexis made a full recovery as well and is considered by many a real-life superhero. Number 4. In September of 1848, 25-year-old Phineas Gage was working as the foreman for a crew cutting a railroad bed for the Rutland and Burlington Railroad in Vermont. While using a tamping iron to pack explosive powder into a hole in the outcropping of a rock, Gage was distracted by his men working behind him. Looking over his right shoulder, Gage began to speak. At that moment, the tamping iron struck the rock, making sparks and causing the powder to explode, sending the 43-inch tamping rod upward and into the left side of his face passing behind his left eye, through the left side of his brain, and out the top of his skull, landing about 80 feet away. Within minutes, Gage spoke, never losing consciousness. He then walked with little assistance to an ox cart in which he rode upright back to town. About half an hour after the accident, Gage greeted his doctor outside a hotel saying, Doctor, here is business enough for you. Though he survived, his recovery was long and difficult, leaving him with many personality changes. In February 1860, less than 12 years after the accident, Gage began having epileptic seizures. Returning home to his mother on May 18th, Gage died on May 21st during status epilepticus at the age of 36. His skull and tamping rod remain on display in the Warren Anatomical Museum in Boston. Number 3. In December of 2008, Matthew Lowe was working as a welder at Compass Engineering. As he began to walk away from a computer-controlled conveyor that moved metal into the factory, Lowe's overalls were caught by the machine. Realizing there was nothing he could do, Lowe simply relaxed and hoped for the best. With luck, Lowe's head was pulled through a wider gap while his body was pulled through a mere five-inch gap. Shredding his clothes and crushing his body, Lowe was pushed out the other side of the machine, suffering a broken back, ribs, hips, and pelvis, as well as rupturing his stomach and bowel. Lowe would endure six operations, leaving him with a large amount of metal needed to pin his pelvis back together. But he would go on to make a near full recovery with a weakened right arm as his only visible injury. Eighteen months after the accident, Lowe returned to work at Compass Engineering and began training to become site supervisor. Number two. 
In December of 2007, Alcides Moreno was working as a window washer at the Solo Tower along with his brother Edgar. Both men fell 47 stories when a cable broke on the scaffold from which they were working. Though Edgar was killed on impact, Alcides survived and was found conscious atop a pile of cables and railings. Paramedics transported him to New York Presbyterian, where he received 24 pints of blood and 19 pints of plasma. Suffering from many injuries including damaged kidneys, collapsed lungs, 10 broken bones, and blood clots in his brain, Alcides would go through 16 operations to repair the damage. 18 days later, on Christmas Day, Alcides spoke for the first time since the accident. After a long and difficult regimen of physical and occupational therapy as well as psychotherapy to cope with the loss of his brother, Alcides has made a near full recovery. He is now living in a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona with his wife and children, where he completed the Turkey Day 5K in 2011 to benefit a Catholic food pantry. Number 1. In 1987, 14-year-old Ahad Israfil was shot in the head when his employer accidentally knocked a gun to the floor. Though the bullet destroyed most of the right side of his brain, after only a five-hour operation, Ahad attempted to speak. Though half of his skull and most of one of his cerebral hemispheres were destroyed, the skin of his scalp was not. After filling the void of his skull with silicone, his scalp was repaired, even allowing to regrow his hair. After recovery, Ahad went on to graduate from his local university with honors as well as appear on shows like World of Pain and Ripley's Believe It or Not. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. See you next time.